Hello, good afternoon, everyone. We'll be starting our webinar shortly. So for those who are here already, please feel free to scan the QR code on this slide. You'll be, you'll be able to access the more detailed information about the course material as well as how to sign up. We will begin our webinar uh, in two minutes time. Thank you. Okay, once again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So do take the last few seconds uh, to scan the QR code for now if you, are, if you want to see the slides as well as the course sign up page. But I will show this slide again at the end of the presentation so that you can, you can double check again, no worries. Okay, so without further ado, we will begin our webinar for today. So thank you for coming to our webinar on the Industrial Additive Manufacturing for Practitioner class. So this, uh, this for today, right, uh, Dr. Krishnan and myself, uh, Ting Kyung, we will be giving you an overview of this, uh, this course. And then with us today, we have also have our panelists, uh, Mr. Kenny from uh, EOS, uh, Manchun from Materialize, as well as Balu from Tuxu. So together, the three of them are also the trainers for this, uh, this industrial additive manufacturing uh, class. So they will be with us at the end of the Q&A to help answer some questions that you might have as well. Just a quick agenda for what we will be covering today. So firstly, Dr. Krishna will give you an introduction to the method additive manufacturing and some of its applications. After that, I will give you some broad uh, overview of what this uh, additive manufacturing can be covered for the different sectors. And then we'll move on with a Q&A with the audience at the end. Let me first give you a quick overview of our presenter for today. So Dr. Krishnan is our technical lead at the Additive Manufacturing Industrialization Department with the Advanced Remanufacturing and Technology Center or ERTC. He has accumulated 10 years of working experience in the EM sector and also six years of related experience uh, in the industry. So Dr. Krishnan graduated with his PhD in production engineering from the Polytechnic University of Turin, Italy. He also holds a double master's degree in material science from the Saarland University, Germany, and the Lulia University, Sweden. His bachelor's degree was in mechanical engineering from the Kominbatori Institute of Technology, India. So a brief overview of myself. So I am currently a development scientist also under the additive manufacturing department in ERTC. So currently uh, I'm working more in the process development as well as in process monitoring for the powder bed uh, laser fusion technology. So we target mainly at the aerospace sector. So I received my PhD in mechanical engineering from the Nanyang Technology University, Singapore. And I previously I was working on the heat transfer devices, especially in two-phase flow using additive manufacturing. So without further ado, uh, let me welcome Dr. Krishnan to give you a brief overview of ERTT as well as the module itself. Uh, Dr. Krishnan, please. Thank you, Kin Kyung, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is fine and healthy. OK, so uh, I would like to give a very brief overview about the ERTC model. Uh, so ARTC is one of the research in entities under ASTAR. And this is kind of different comparing to other ASTAR institutes because uh, our uh, ARTC model is mainly public-private partnership model. That being said, we have more than uh, 75 industry consortium members on board. 
and uh, we we really develop r and d solutions uh, so the members are divided into three different uh, tier levels uh, anchor and tier 1 and then tier 2 and tier 3 so uh, there are uh, two different possibilities to have uh, industry engagements for ARTC. The first one core project, uh, which means uh, in order to solve the common industrial problems. The other category is member specific project or direct project. Uh, so uh, this one is uh, pretty much specific for, for an indi individual member problem statement and, and so on. If you would like to have further details about ARTC, I would uh, suggest you to refer to our website. Next slide, please. So uh, I would like to give a brief overview with regards to different manufacturing techniques. Uh, so manufacturing techniques could be divided into three broad categories. The first one, forming technique, uh, so in which we have a mold cavity and we usually put the molten material to form the uh, shape of an usable component. Some of these processes would be casting, molding, forging, rolling, etc. The second category of manufacturing technique would be subtractive manufacturing. And we have a block of uh, raw material, a feedstock, and uh, we start to remove the uh, excess material from this uh, feedstock in order to form the end usable component geometry. So uh, some of the examples of uh, subtractive manufacturing process would be turning, drilling, grinding, etc. Next slide. So the third category is uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing. Uh, so you, you might have also come across different uh, names for this uh, rapid, rapid prototyping, rapid manufacturing, free from fabrication, additive manufacturing, 3D printing. According to ASTM, they widely refer this process as additive manufacturing. And uh, some of the characteristics of uh, uh, 3D printing would be like free, free form production because uh, we, we have the design and then we use the printer to deposit the material and achieve the end usable component. And complex shapes can be easily achieved without further tooling or jigs or fixtures. High customization is possible. So for example, if I am fabricating two different components in the same build, uh, at the same time, the design could be different or uh, that could be further customization like engraving names or different size of features for different components, etc. And uh, on demand manufacturing, this is quite useful with regards to supply chain and uh, spare parts. Then uh, this uh, 3D printing or additive manufacturing is very suitable for low volume production. So what is 3D printing? Uh, we have a geometric model and uh, this geometric uh, CAD file is transferred to the 3D printer and the 3D printer deposits the material layer by layer in order to have the three dimensional component. So uh, typically for the CAD uh, software, we, we can use uh, Siemens NX or CATIA, et cetera. And uh, different materials can be processed, uh, plastic, sand, ceramic, uh, and metal. So uh, in this, sorry, j just one more thing. So when we look at uh, uh, the these three pictures, the left side, we have the CAD model, and the right side, we have two different components produced with varying layer thickness. So if we have the smaller layer thickness, it would conform to the CAD file properly. Yeah. So uh, according to ASTM classification, there are uh, eight different processes uh, on 3D printing. 
and seven of them are pretty much uh, 3d printing uh, in terms of depositing the material and achieve the three dimensional component whereas the hybrid is something uh, we combine 3d printing and also the subtractive or machining process in a single stage equipment so uh, this particular training we are mainly focusing on metal 3d printing and that two laser beam powder bed process perhaps you might have also come across different terminologies or different abbreviations for laser beam powder bed additive manufacturing process uh, for example uh, EOS, they call it a direct metal laser sintering and other uh, OEMs, they call like DMLM, SLM, DMP, et cetera. Next slide. So uh, in this slide, it, it gives kind of comprehensive overview uh, with regards to different uh, 3D printing techniques as well as different OEMs. For example, when we, sorry. For example, when we consider laser beam powder bed uh, process, uh, SLM, then uh, EOS, DMLS, or uh, some of the main OEMs. Next slide. I would like to bring your attention to the uh, course details. So uh, in this course, uh, we we are uh, covering end to end with regards to additive manufacturing. What do I mean by saying end to end coverage? So uh, when we talk about 3D printing, it consists of few different stages. First, we need to design the component and then uh, data preparation needs to be done. Thereafter, uh, process planning in terms of choice of material as well as the right process settings need to be selected. And then we, we also need to uh, evaluate the printed part with regards to material, mechanical properties, as well as dimensional conformance, et cetera. So this training would give a bit more comprehensive overview of all these stages. And uh, the training is divided into uh, five different sessions spread across three different days. So uh, this course will cover implementing 3D printing effectively in different uh, application sectors and perform part screening and identify the value proportions for 3D printing. So part screening is quite important. Uh, why? Because we are not saying that uh, 3D printing would replace the conventional manufacturing, but rather we need to consider 3D printing and conventional manufacturing are complementing each other. So uh, that being said, pot selection with regards to technical fit, economy fit, et cetera, are quite important to create value by implementing 3D printing. So that will be covered in this course. Then design for metal additive manufacturing is also quite important. And most of uh, engineers are trained with, with regards to traditional manufacturing. But when we think about implementing 3D printing, we need to consider uh, the design for additive manufacturing and also uh, for a particular uh, printing technique or a particular printer, we, we need to understand properly what, what can be feasible, what is not feasible, et cetera. Then uh, quality control and safety aspects is also quite important. For powder bed technique, uh, we are uh, us usually handling the so-called very fine metal powder particles. So we need to maintain the 3D printing facility uh, to a certain safety standards, uh, as well as the printed uh, component to conform to the quality standards. Then finally, uh, validate and qualify the component for serial production. So uh, all these things 
uh, will be covered in the training and we are partnering with three different uh, companies to offer this training. Our industry partners are from EOS Materialize and Tusud, and they have quite uh, wide experience with regards to 3D printing. And they will also share their uh, experiences with regards to 3D printing through this course. Next slide, please. So now we are coming to a bit more important part, uh, which is uh, course fee and funding, etc. So uh, for Singaporeans, uh, they are able to uh, they they are a they are eligible for a skills future credit and uh, the course fee for international participant is uh, $1,600 and for uh, Singaporeans uh, and Singaporean peers, uh, they are also eligible for a course fee concession. So the next one, uh, which I would like to talk about who would be the potential participants for the training so uh, the participants could be from uh, different organizations which uh, would like to develop capabilities with regards to metal 3d printing and then uh, practicing engineers designers uh, in different sectors like manufacturing tooling etc and uh, individuals who currently uh, work in different uh, sector, but uh, they would like to uh, get a bit more insight about 3D printing, etc. So a typical candidate profile could be a process technician or an engineer, pro pro production supervisor or manager, quality control manager or engineer, etc. So with this, I end my presentation and I hand over to my colleague Kim Kyung who will continue further. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Krishnan. So I will give you an overview of what you will be expected to learn, okay, if you, if you attend our courses. So firstly, right, for this training, we have, uh, we'll be launching our training app for immersive learning experience. So we, uh, in ERTC, we do have a few machines, especially the EOS, machines such as the EOS M290. However, due to the limit of space as well as uh, the requirement for, for some of the users to be trained, right? Uh, we have decided to launch this app so that more people can actually have hands-on experience during the course itself. So this is actually an augmented reality app that can be accessed through a portable device. And with this, right, you can mimic the experience, right, of, of using the machine. So for example, you can, uh, you can, with the app, you can, you can try to start up the machine to load the part, load the file, and then to mimic the building process. And finally, you can actually uh, mimic how to do the post-processing itself. So of course, there will be lab, lab uh, hands-on as well, but due to the limited machine for all the participants, right, this uh, augmented reality will supplement the lab training so that everyone will have uh, more uh, all-rounded experience, okay? So our aim is to really give you a very all-rounded experience working with the ma real machines and seeing the real part being built during the training itself. So next up, I will cover a bit on the design for additive manufacturing. So when we talk about design for additive manufacturing, we are essentially thinking how to redesign certain parts of a component, okay, to make it more suitable for printing and for, for application itself. So we take this example of this uh, aerospace component, the hydraulic, the flight control hydraulic uh, component. Okay, so typically, right, uh, this, this kind of parts, they are either built using casting or machining. So there is some uh, limitation in terms of how the parts are built or assembled. So with 3D printing, right, there are opportunities, okay, to improve the functionality, reduce the weight, and even consolidate the design together. And if you are aware, there is a, this thing called topology optimization, when you can simulate and reduce the weight drastically by cutting away volumes that are not essential to a component. And this itself is a very achievable thing using 3D printing. And it's not achievable by other conventional manufacturing techniques. 
So I give you this example okay, of a typical process flow when we talk about design for additive manufacturing. So on the left, top left, you can see this is a standard uh, conventionally made hydraulic block. So it's uh, typically bulky, custard, and you have to drill and machine to get the correct uh, dimensions for your fitting. Through design for AM, you can actually reduce away the portions that are not necessary. And then you just print the parts that, that are essential. So as you can see, it can transform a very bulky component to a very slick and optimized structure. And of course, you need to do some processing, such as to make sure that the connectors are, are done properly. So there may be some machining involved, okay, to build in the to, to attach the connectors. And then there could be some uh, some surface touch-up to make sure that the surface finishing is, is ad adequate enough for this application. Okay, so, so design for EM essentially is a, is a know-how that requires from the start to the end. So in this, in this course, right, we will show you a glimpse of how this process is done, okay, and apply it to some simple components for your practice so that you can bring back to your manufacturing process and, and think about how to redesign it so some of the key benefits, as you can see here, okay, definitely you can reduce a lot of part count and indirectly also reducing the weight. So of course, after this part is done, you have to still go through qualification and certification. This one, typically you have to work with the, uh, the user itself, okay, so, or even the external validation body like, like too soon, okay? So some of the key considerations for Part selection also, right, that we will cover in the course will be how to check for technical fit, okay, how to check for economic fit. Does it make economic sense if you use AM on this part? And then how to paint a business case because we are not just going to produce this part. We need to, need to tell the your stakeholders how this eventually will replace certain component and how it can benefit your business in the long run. And finally, how we can put this process into a production uh, mode in the long run. So for quality assurance, typically when a part is built, we need to check that the part uh, meets the quality. So for example, you can check like the material properties, tensile properties and all this. So there is uh, all kinds of materials that is suitable for AM. However, in this course, we will focus uh, for metals part. So metals such as titanium, steel, or aluminum based uh, uh, material, okay? So some of the key properties that will be introduced and shown during this uh, course will be firstly on powder. Powder itself is the building block for this uh, AM uh, in the powder bed fusion technology. So the quality of the powder is very important. So when you purchase powder from OEM or other sources, okay, it's important to know how to char characterize the flow properties, okay, how to check for the density. So the density can be the packing density of the part, how, you, how it packs nicely when you, when you put it into the chamber. Okay and how to check for moisture content and the morphology. So moisture content and morphology will affect how well your powder will coat. So, so this will actually be shown to you. And after the part is built, okay, typically you will have some coupon level testing to validate the quality. So for example, a uh, typical key is to look at the porosity. So if the porosity can be seen under the microscope and you can determine whether is this part a high quality part. So a high quality part will indicate that there's very minimal pores available, okay? But if you were to go for higher level uh, characterization, you can look at the melt pool. The melt pool will reveal the constituent elements and also the melt pool profile, the melt tracks. This will allow you to study how well is the, is the fusing of the powder after melting. And of course, for mechanical tests, uh, tensile testing is very common. Okay, so we do have uh, various ASTM standards or ISO standards that you can follow. And we do have an in-house facility to demonstrate for this kind of uh, testing. So if you have a certain material, you will want to validate that it is meeting your requirement. Okay, usually the OEM might give you a range of requirement uh, for the spec specifications. But if you're working with new powder and new material, then definitely this is very important for you to check, okay? that are you getting the right properties that are required. So of course, other than tensile tests, there could be other mechanical properties of bending tests and others uh, so on. So we will show, we, have, we do have the labs in ARTC to carry out 
most of these activities and there will be demonstrations in the lab on how these are carried out as well. So safety is of course uh, very essential for us to consider. So when it comes to uh, metal powder handling, okay, you need to be aware of the different hazards such as the toxic, the inhalation and the fire uh, explosion. So in ARTC, we do have guidelines, okay, for all this uh, handling of this toxic uh, powder and so on. So we'll, sh we'll share with you the best practices, okay, what is required to, for you to handle with uh, either PPE, your respirator, okay, your lab coats, your glove, and also how do you store the powder? So there are flammable cabinets and there are some guidelines from the SCDF as well, okay, that we will share with you on how to, how to set up an AM lab. So the long-term plan is that if you were to bring this uh, knowledge back to your own manufacturing facility and set up uh, AM facility in the long run, okay, how can you carry out? So over here, we will show you examples and give you the guidelines that will be very useful for you in the long run. So next thing is about uh, qualification. So more and more people are actually uh, using EM part for a real component uh, usage, especially in the aerospace uh, industry. So when it comes to the real functional part, people will be very concerned with how, how good is the quality of the part? Is it reliable enough? How do I qualify it for to replace a certain component that has been traditionally made using other uh, manufacturing methods? So with, with a powder-based fusion technology, okay, especially in the EOS machine, the EOS M290, we do come with equipped okay, with an in-process monitoring uh, system. So what this in-process monitoring system does is it records okay, the building process. So it has uh, different cameras that can record the, the near the near infrared region, okay, and there is processing software in order for you to visualize the, the powder bed during the building process. And because this is typically quite a data intensive uh, uh, process, so imagine you're taking a lot of snapshots of your platform, okay? You need to have this uh, way to, to visualize and to understand the data that you're getting. Is it, and how to analyze whether this, this part, is it a good part or is it a defective part? So we will introduce to you with the use of this uh, in-process monitoring system in the EOS M290, okay, how we can collect the data, how we can check for stability in your process and reproducibility, okay? And using the monitoring system, you can also archive data and compare the data from print job to print job. So if you are printing 10 print jobs every month, okay, you want to make sure that, you know, every print job, they are comparable to one another. And if there are really defects or problems that comes up that are captured, you want to be able to quickly diagnose where, where the problem comes from and how can you uh, solve it before you carry on with the production stage. Okay, so this is where the in-process monitoring will come in very handy. Okay, so with this, uh, we have come to the end of this webinar. So uh, I hope we have managed to give you a glimpse, right, of what, what the content and how this webinar will be carried out. So if you want further information, please uh, scan the QR code below, okay, to look, take a deeper look at the brochure and also the web page. For participants who are interested, right, you can actually uh, use the register now page to indicate your, your interest to sign up. Okay, it will be a form that will be sent to the ARTC site where we can uh, contact you. And of course, uh, right now we'll open up for Q&A first to see whether there's any common questions, okay, that we will try our best to answer. So uh, please feel free to, to put in the chat, okay? I know sometimes uh, most people are very shy. So if, if you, if you don't mind, okay, uh, yeah, we'll be happy to engage some of you here if you are willing to share with us, like for example, uh, what is your current role in your company and what kind of information that you want to, want to have, you know, okay. 
So those, this will be very helpful for us to cater to the needs of our participants later on in the, in the course. Okay. So, uh, so maybe, uh, yeah, I have a friend here, Vincent. <laughs> I can come. Hi, I'll, yeah, I'll be launching the, the poll also. So, okay, while you're sure. asking questions, uh, we would like, you, we'd like everyone to fill in the poll, please. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, there is a poll right now. Please feel free to vote. Yeah, I will try to, I mean, to make this more interactive. Uh, I'll try to talk to some of your participants, okay, to see the viewpoint that you have. Maybe we start with Vincent first. Vincent, are you there? Cannot, cannot hear. Anyone is, uh, yeah? If you're interested to share any viewpoint or any questions, actually, we are interested to find out like where you're from, what kind of uh, work you're doing, so that uh, what kind of relevance are you looking for in this in this course? Anyone will be interested uh, to share? Don't be shy. Don't have to show video. Just uh, voice voice will do. <laughs> yeah. We have a few here. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy or Jongshen. Don't worry, this part will not be shown in the in the public recording. It will be censored away later on. Yeah, uh, and alternatively, uh, you can actually uh, type in your questions in the chat box. Uh, Mr. Wong can actually take it from there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a question from uh, Kit Kwan. So design and as a design engineer, he's saying uh, as a design engineer, do I benefit from this course? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. So uh, before I get some of the panelists to answer, just I'll just to give a quick overview. So firstly, right, yes, I will tell you definitely design engineer you benefit because uh, I don't know whether you, you come from a design for EM background, but the designing for EM could be very different from the normal uh, other machining or, or casting design. Okay, so maybe uh, I will open up to more details by our panelists. Maybe uh, one Chun, would you like to share more about how, how design comes into play when we talk about design for EM? Um, yep, sure. Um, pretty much, I think uh, the same like what King Kyung has actually shared. It, it will be definitely beneficial for for you coming in from a design background. It's just that uh, whether are you currently involved in design for additive manufacturing or uh, just a design for traditional manufacturing? Because um, if you look into design for additive manufacturing, of course, it's a uh, different things compared with the traditional um, designing method. So in this course itself, um, you will be learning about what will be the design guidelines about um, designing in AM itself and uh, different uh, tips and tricks itself that you can actually master when you actually, um, you know, switch over some of the parts into additive manufacturing. And um, because of the nature of the technologies itself is that um, it, it actually en enable you to have a more, um, creativity in terms of design. So um, this will actually uh, helps you to open up uh, different possibilities for different applications itself. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just also like for the materialized software, uh, it is uh, especially useful for, for AM because it can help you with uh, support structure generation. Okay, so for, for all AM parts, right, we have to decide the correct orientation to build it. If you build it in a very poor orientation, your part will likely warp or even fail halfway. So we need to think of how to best uh, choose the correct support structure and how to uh, orient it properly and how to uh, 
combine more parts into a single print as well. So you maximize your print volume. And of course, right, uh, for higher design functions would be like topology optimization. So if you look at a block of uh, structure, right, usually you want to make it as lightweight as possible. So there are many softwares available, okay, that can help you do this kind of uh, customization and optimization. And of course, whatever you design may not be printable. So you need to have a real life experience okay, to put it into play later. So we will show you some of the parts that has been printed also successfully transformed from a traditional part to an EM optimized part in this module. Hope that answers your question. Okay. So yeah, Vincent, uh, mine is not working. So uh, yeah, Vincent is interested in uh, learning to design cooling channels for inserts. So maybe I will take it first. Uh, so for, for inserts and cooling channels, right, uh, we do have projects, right, that we have uh, conducted with our members, okay, SMEs. So uh, one example is actually uh, your casting, casting uh, molding, the molding part. So typically, when you design a molding tool, right, okay, uh, in the traditional sense, they will drill holes for cooling channel. So these holes are limited in terms of your direction, the shape, okay, typically has to be straight cuts. So with, uh, with this AM, right, you can actually design conformal cooling channel. So imagine if you have a channel that curve conform to the surfaces, okay, you can actually reach the surface in a very uh, more homogeneous, okay, and optimized way. So we have shown that by design conformal cooling channels, right, or casting part especially, you can uh, increase the cycle, increase the production rate by 40% because the cooling is a lot more efficient now. So that is, that is one part. So of course you need to have the know-how and to know the limits of this, uh, this design that you're looking at. And secondly, uh, more and more people are moving towards compact heat exchanger. Okay, so heat exchanger itself, if you look at your, your car radiator, all these, right, they are typically uh, metal sheets that are primed together, okay? For cooling channels that are internal, typically it's multiple components where they clamp together as well. So this has also limits in terms of assembly and the shape for the flow path. So AM can actually replace some of these cooling channels with customized flow path, okay? As well as replacing them with, uh, with lattices, lattices that can, that can uh, increase the surface area and optimize different cooling region very, uh, very nicely. Okay, so there will be a lot of opportunities in this area. So yeah, any, uh, yeah, anyone would like to add on to this part in terms of like cooling channels and inserts? Yeah, Kenny here from EOS. Yeah, so actually, uh, I think King Kiong has uh, covered most of the important factor in the mold design. And I would just want to add on is that uh, currently more than 60% of the uh, mold currently has is uh, currently practiced in China. So actually we have a China team that working closely with the uh, mold customer in China. So definitely, uh, they can share a lot of uh, practical information. For example, how thin is the minimum uh, wall that uh, applicable for our uh, mold that can be a DT manufacturer uh, with uh, giving a lifetime, for example, more than 1 million shots of uh, injection. Yeah. So those details, uh, EOS, will be, EOS consulting team will be able to share with the customer. Thank you. Yeah, so the good thing is you really get to talk to the experts from different uh, industry partners if you come to the course. If you have a problem statement that is even better, you can, you can prepare a problem statement and then come and share with us. We will be happy to, to share with you our views on how to tackle some of the challenges that your company or your current work might be facing. Okay. So, yeah, just want to confirm whether others have any related questions. So anything uh, from the other attendees, like uh, Jimmy, SK, or JY? Okay.
So uh, if not, right, I think we have quite a good discussion at least for some of the concerns that you have. Uh, Krishnan, is there anything you would like to add? I, I would like to know if there are any further questions in other areas like material characterization or uh, qualification uh, for 3D printing, etc. No question is wrong, you know, so j just ask. Yeah. We, we are here to help you. So do you, uh, anyone here foresee any challenges that you might have with your, with your parts? How do you usually validate the parts after, after you have manufactured them? Okay. So Vincent also asking uh, standards to follow to qualify a printed part. Okay, uh, Krishnan, do you want to take it? Yeah, so uh, with regards to qualification, uh, we would have to look at the end application sector first. For example, uh, let's consider either aerospace or medtech, right? And uh, with, with regards to end application perspective, we need to fulfill certain criteria. So uh, we would have to adhere to those standards and uh, eventually how do we qualify the uh, 3D printing process? First, we need to uh, establish uh, the manufacturing standards uh, with regards to your particular 3D printing uh, process, equipment and material. And thereafter, we, uh, we would have to uh, conduct uh, coupon levels testing. Uh, uh, so uh, for one of the projects, we, we conducted uh, TDS uh, mechanical and material properties evaluation because the application sector is quite critical. So uh, we we conducted uh, about uh, more than 100 tensile tests for for aluminium material. So this way we we can establish the so-called uh, confidence uh, confidence uh, with regards to the manufacturing process, and thereafter we also need to establish the product level. Uh, qualification. So we would fabricate the part and we would uh, conduct the laboratory level testing uh, for the func functionality of the component, etc. Then uh, with all these results, with the, uh, with the collaboration with the certification body, like um, there are, there are uh, different certification bodies around. Uh, for example, uh, in this webinar, we, we have uh, our colleague Balu from Tufsud, who will be able to help us in terms of certifying uh, 3D printing process as well as the 3D printed components, etc. So, uh, in a nutshell, uh, uh, it's not very straightforward approach, but we do have certain protocols and procedure to be followed uh, with regards to 3D printed components qualification and so on. Yeah. Balu uh, or others, would you like to add anything? Um, no, Krishnan, you have pretty much, uh, you know, explained the basic procedure. Again, um, adding on to what you have uh, mentioned, this basically depends on the, the 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 industry specific or application area, and based on that, there are a lot of. Uh, uh, I mean, currently a few good standards are coming out from ISO, ASTM, Technical Committee, TC261. So there are uh, standards for qualifying even operators of laser powder bit fusion machines. And, uh, you know, uh, the quality, I mean, it starts from there and 
but probably i mean this that's a that's an expansion that you can think of but even otherwise for uh, qualifying materials qualifying end parts qualifying properties and even how to you know design and and uh, uh, orientate your your test coupons there are a lot of uh, you know standards and uh, other uh, pro protocols and test plans are involved so we will make use of that and then that will be helpful in uh, in and i mean answering your question how it is done yeah, that's all. Um, it's, it's a huge topic by itself. So I just want to, yeah, uh, I don't want to, you know, quote different uh, uh, standard numbers and then make it look like something of a rocket science. But um, at the moment, yeah, please be assured that there are uh, good protocols, test plans and standards that are coming up and available and we will make use of that to meet those requirements. Okay, thank you, Balu. Yeah, thanks, Balu. Uh, there is another question from K. Kwon, I hope I pronounced name correctly. Uh, so the question is, do we need to take note of uh, mechanical properties of materials between 3D printed component and machined component? Yes, we, we always need to consider that difference. So why I'm saying this, uh, for example, let's just consider metal 3D printing, uh, such as laser beam, uh, powder bed fusion process. So uh, here the raw, raw material feedstock is in the form of very fine metal powder particles. The average size of powder particles would be in the range of 30 or 35 micrometer, all right? And we use uh, heat energy through laser beam to consolidate this powder material into a solid metal component. So uh, when you compare the grain size and the microstructure between a 3D printed component, let's consider aluminum and a die cast aluminum material. The properties with regards to grain size uh, microstructure would be different. And because of this difference, we will have different mechanical properties uh, with regards to hardness, uh, tensile properties, or fatigue properties. And uh, for, for 3D printing, uh, there will be always some level of anisotropy to be considered. And uh, we need to consider all these things uh, to be uh, keyed in when we conduct the FEA. Otherwise, the results could be a bit different when we compare the FEA results to that of experimental one. So typically uh, what we do at ARTC, we, we have a kind of standard protocol to fabricate some kind of cantilever beams to calibrate the software first, and thereafter we will carry out further analysis. Inkyam, would you like to add anything if I have missed any? Yeah, so just to add on is that uh, typically 3D printed properties can surpass uh, traditionally casted properties because of the way that it's being formed in a very uh, high temperature gradient process, but they lose out in terms of ductility. So if you want to conform back to a certain property, you can use uh, post process heat treatment. Okay, so for different materials, they are recommended heat treatment cycles for you to achieve a certain quality properties. So this can be easily found uh, either from the OEM itself or from uh, available literature, unless you are working on a very niche and new material. Yep. And then uh, there is one more uh, part uh, which I would like to highlight here. So uh, I briefly talked about 3D the difference uh, with regards to 3D printed component and emission the component or cast component. Uh, so we usually carry out different heat treatments depending on the application requirements for 3D printed metal parts. So depending on the heating uh, heat treatment profile that we choose for a particular material and particular component, the properties could be different. So all these considerations need to be uh, carried out properly uh, when we sell it like uh, the flow of process, different stages, and uh, choice of material, choice of 3D printing process, even the post-processing like uh, heat treatment, machining, etc. Okay. Thanks, Krishnan. Uh, yeah. So maybe any any inputs uh, from Jimmy or SK? Other questions? 
I see that you have some comment there. Okay. If not, I think, Jimmy, would you like to share anything? <laughs> because SK said that you might have something to share. <laughs> You can just type, type it out, it's okay. <laughs> but you can say it out. I think they have to... Are we able to unmute them? Because I see the icon, but... I don't think that they are... Okay. Maybe Jimmy, you can type out if you cannot, we cannot hear you. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy. Uh, yeah. yeah sorry, you got some, yeah, I'm using a handphone, so there's some, the reception is not very good here. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, for this course, uh, actually, I'm more interested on the, like, is it suitable for like uh, some sales guy? So you like sales for, is it for machine or is it for like a uh, process kind? Uh, for, uh, for this, uh, because uh, sales on this, uh, more on this uh, 3D printing industry. Okay. Uh, so uh, could you elaborate what this person does? Uh, he's a sales engineer. Yeah, yeah, because I want, uh, I would like him to like, uh, maybe know more about this 3D printing and all the standard of this. Okay, okay. So uh, if, if the objective is to get uh, a bit more insight about uh, uh, fundamentals of uh, metal 3D printing and so on, uh, this particular training is very suitable. Yeah, especially if you want the person to be able to explain all the benefits, you know, from, from AM, he has to be able to give an overview of what are different features AM can offer to mm, other yeah, yeah. I do see some, some usefulness in that. Yeah, okay. and also how to select the correct part for the AM business and some other information like how to design for the part to be successful in editing manufacturing. So I believe this course will definitely help your sales on that. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah, Thank that's, you. Uh, that's uh, the main thing that I, I, I would like to know about this course because uh, I'm considering sending on one of my guys I need to attend this course also. Sure. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can always check the website for the full information. Because uh, even though we cover uh, more of EOS systems now, but in ARTC, we do have different systems also. It can, it's a very good overview to understand the, 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 all the essential equipment and also all the supporting stuff that is needed to function properly or matter capturing itself. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I, and uh, to further add on, uh, it's not just uh, having set of 3D printers at ARTC, it is also about uh, the pre-processing in terms of design data preparation. We do have quite strong team uh, with regards to those aspects. And then further subsequent uh, post-processing uh, after 3D printing, uh, we we have a comprehensive setup uh, in terms of heat treatment furnaces, uh, metrology lab equipment, uh, as well as different testing equipment with regards to mechanical material properties evaluation, etc. So under one roof, you would be able to see almost everything with regards to 3D printing at ARTC. Okay, okay. Then uh, about the hands-on portion is more on like a uh, visual, I mean, visual 3D, I mean, that kind of uh, environment or is it actually uh, there's some, some session that will, will be actually hands-on on the, on the machine. Okay, so uh, it's a very good question. Uh, I really appreciate that you, you ask this. Uh, 
because of hsc reasons uh, we we would not allow the training participants to touch the equipment and uh, uh, and that being said uh, we we have another alternative through ar vr app and uh, uh, through this app uh, we uh, the the participant could practice with regards to setting up the equipment and get the feel of uh, how the overall uh, step by step process would look like in terms of setting up the machine and removing the component etc uh, on top of that uh, we we also have uh, differentiations for example in day 2 uh, end of day 2 we we have a half an hour or one hour dedicated session with regards to support removal and post processing like short peening or polishing etc where uh, the uh, the learners can uh, practice hands on in terms of uh, removal of supports etc Mm, okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's that's my that's only my my question on these courses. Yeah, um, and I'm yeah, and I'm really uh looking forward for the course. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think it's about time as well. Uh, we are nearing three o'clock. So uh, if if. We will we'll end the Q&A now, but of course, if you have any further questions, right, uh, you can feel free to drop us an email. From the brochure website, you'll be easily able to find a uh, Krishna's email as well. Okay. So if you have any technical information that you want to find out more, uh, we'll be happy to answer you. So any yeah. um, from Krishna and Tom, yeah. Uh, sorry, just one, one more point to add on. Uh, I... I can understand you may have uh, further clar clarifications or further queries at a later point. Please feel free to drop me an email. Uh, I'll be happy to clarify. Yeah, thank you.